Now, uh, the, one of the questions in my mind, uh, David, is, is that, OK, you can give a relatively large psychedelic dose mm. of, say, psilocybin or LSD, and you have a particular experience. Now, the question in my mind is, is it the experience or is it the pharmacodynamic effect on the brain and what argues in my mind in favor of the pharmacodynamic effect rather than the experiential effect is that that micro dosing can be effective okay so that's so i mean i don't know quite what your audience is but i imagine some of them won't understand well they all understand pharmacodynamic um yeah, oh yeah i've got i've got them fairly well trained up okay i'm quite i'm quite strict so so we're just talking about the the, the way that medicines work in on the body the way they, they right. affect the body. Yep. So, so you've, you, that is a big question you've asked, right? Because you've asked two questions. You've asked, is yeah, the that. dynamic effect? And, and is a lower pharmacodynamic effect through microdosing, could it be effective? Yeah. And the answer is both are true. So there's no, there, but in terms of the big trip, and there's a huge debate going on at present, and I, I, I'm going to tell you where I stand. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think you'll probably agree with me. I, I, I actually think that the lifting someone out of depression with a powerful trip is likely to have some psychological effects as well as just being a biological effect of the brain. For sure. Now that's what I and I and I and I, we know from hi, from history of treating depression with other drugs that if you engage in therapy with medicine, you get better outcomes. So it's kind of to me that's what that's what psychiatry is. It's it's not just giving people things. It's actually you helping them overcome their, their stress and their distress by, um, by therapy. So I believe in that. I, th I think it's ethical and morally right. But as, we, as you're probably going to guess, there are companies being developed which say, no, no, we don't want to do any of that because we don't want to do, we don't want to waste our time talking to people. Uh, we just want to give them a jolt, shake their brain up and they will get better. And I say, well, you know, that kind of surely there must still be value in talking. You say, well, well we can't do the talking because if we do the talking, the FDA won't approve us. Mm, no, we we're limited in what we can say, I know. Exactly. But there, there, there is evidence, you, you're fairly convinced that micro-dosing can be beneficial, can be therapeutic. Well, it's a, but it's a different kind of therapy, so this is really important. Right. Micro -dose, yeah. <laughs> Taking a microdose of a mushroom today isn't going to lift your depression. No. But it take, take, take weeks. Over time, I think it's, I mean, you know, certainly there's plenty of sensible people who you know, I respect, yeah, like, uh, who have used microdosing to benefit. But proving that microdosing works is challenging, partly because it's the illegality means it's almost impossible, expensive to do the studies. Uh, I think it's plausible. I mean, one of the things I'm quite interested in is because so many people tell me that microdosing does help them. I can't prove it. But, but it, it's perfectly possible that after a trip, you might be able to maintain wellness or even improve wellness with microdosing. That's a study that needs to be done, but mm. very difficult. Because can I just tell you, here's an anecdote. A tr this is a true story. Seven years ago, um, working with Amanda Fielding at the Beckley Foundation, we got permission to do a LSD microdosing study at Imperial College. But they said every microdose had to be given in hospital. We said, well, it, but it kind of is a microdose, you know, they're not. <laughs> yeah. And they said, well, yeah, but it's an illegal drug. And, you know, we can't have them walking around the streets with it. And we said, well, we can't do that because that means bringing everyone in at least two days a week for six. We can't afford it. And they said, tough. And so we never did the study. So it's very, it's much harder paradoxically to do microdosing studies than it is to do what we call a macrodose. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely incredible. So, so when you take a large dose, a macro dose, you're going to get this acute trip psychedelic effect. Yes, yes. And, and presumably you get some ongoing biochemical effect as well as, well as that. So in a yes. sense, I think, I think what you're saying is you can synergize the, the neurotransmitter effect and the, the neurobiological effect with, with the, the psychological Absolutely. experience. Yeah, and it's bec there, so there are two separate biological processes Mm. which I think you're kind of alluding to. The first is the trip. And the second is after the trip, as a result of the pharmacodynamic interaction in the brain, the brain is more able to think differently. We call it neuroplasticity, and it lasts for weeks. 
And that allows people to opt to really get maximal benefit from any kind of talking therapy. Yes, yes. Uh, this, this is another thing that's come out from, from your book, the, the, the importance of the, 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 uh, the talking therapy, the, the psychotherapy, the counselling, uh, the, the, the drug, the trip, the experience, facilitating increased plasticity, and then moulding it, striking when the iron's hot, really. Is that's that a good analogy. analogy. That's a very good... <laughs> In fact, yes, it's a, that's an excellent analogy, yes. Um, what's that term that you... We use this... T- what is it when you take metal and you and you stick it in the water? So Tem- anneal- temper- tempering, temper it, and like anneal- Yeah, that's right. It's, that's exactly the analogy. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then hopefully you get a nice firm crystalline structure to extend the analogy in the metal that, exactly. that exactly. perpetuates for life. And you can't break it. You can't. Those depressive thoughts can't get into it because you're you've got the right you know positive yeah. thing. Yeah. I I think for me personally, I don't know. You might get a few people saying this that. Um, I mean, to be quite honest, I, I, I haven't done much, much with, 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 with different drugs, but um, th- there was a time I tried some, uh, uh, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on air, um, but uh, over, over, overseas where it was legal, I did once try some, some cannabis. Oh, right. Because I thought it might help with my, my mental state. Uh-huh. And not, not a lot, a small dose. Uh-huh. And I must say, I absolutely hated it. I, I was really struggling to maintain my contact with reality. I felt like this thing was like putting me below the water. Mm-hmm. And I thought, no, I, I want to be in, in, in the real world. So for, for someone as, as uh, obstreperous as me, yeah. um, if you gave me, a, 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 uh, if I was in one of your trials, you gave me a psychedelic dose of psilocybin, I, I think I would really struggle to go with it i think i'd probably be fighting it and trying maintaining contact with reality um yeah, do, 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 does, does that make sense what i've said well i think a lot of people are like you so so i think i would say several things the first is we would never make someone take a psychedelic I oh heck no because we that was done that was one of the ways in which they discredited psychedelics so there was in order to get rid of psychedelics they got they paid senior psychiatrists in the states to do experiments like where they chained patients to the bed and they gave them lsd and they said look it doesn't work i mean you know disgusting and that was apparently that got a prize for the best study of the year in like a sort of it's like, just it's just a complete inversion of everything that medicine stands for isn't it absolutely so that so so people would have they must consent but even when people consent many of them are like you know they're anxious because they've never had it before they you know, all the stories, they, you know, we, we've had 50 years of people telling us you'll go mad if you take LSD. In fact, up off high buildings, you'll peel your skin off because you think you're an orange. Exactly. And in fact, we know, it, it, I mean, the press, anti-LSD press that was put out at the time of the ban led to a very significant increase in the adverse effects of LSD because people were taking it and then, oh my God, I am going to go mad. So, it, it, you know, you can create by basically dishonesty you can create fears in people which become self-perpetuating to some extent so what we do in our therapy and it's this is really critical is it we spend several hours the day before people have their uh, trip preparing them for this right. and, and 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 you're quite re- resisting it you can resist an awful lot you can mm. if you really try hard you can almost certainly not get any benefit in fact then you just get perhaps some distress our, mo- our, our motto is, you know, through, go through, let it go, let it yeah. go through. And then you go to a, you know, into a states of where you've been in the past and, you know, you relive um, aspects of your, your life and childhood. And, and then you get benefit. But, but so, yeah, we, ha- and, and we, the reason we encourage people to, well, the way we help people have the courage to go with it is by having the therapist there all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess there were, I've, you know, I've had people like you around and experienced doctors and therapists that, 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 that understood that. Uh, yes. It, it might be possible, but I, I just I just consider myself a rather poor candidate because I tend to fight things. It's a... Well, it's, it's, a, it's a pity. It's a, wow, you're right. I think you're right. It, is, it, it, it would be a pity. Um, but, you know, um, you may not need it, so let's hope you do. <laughs> yeah. So... Again, 
again, it's not hard to, to, to find people that have had experiences. I've met people, talked to people that have had incredible experiences. Mm. They've met entities. Yeah. Um, they, they, they've they been to other realms. The, the, what I'm trying to ask here is is how do we understand this overlap with spirituality and spiritual religious type experiences well i think they're one and the same i mean i i i don't know if i told you before but uh, i gave a talk in the vatican about a year ago no you didn't <laughs> I, I gave a talk on psychedelics in the vatican and in fact it's come up it's online now you can go online and you can see my vatican talk and i i start off by saying that it, almost all religions originated from experiences which either derive directly from psychedelics or um, other ways of changing your brain, like starvation, like sleep deprivation, like dehydration. So, so psychedelics are just a very efficient way of allowing you to achieve a spiritual experience. I suppose there is counter-argument there, though, that um, if you assume that we are created, whether that was quickly or through an evolutionary process, and God wanted to communicate with people, he'd have to have some apparatus to allow a spiritual experience while yeah. in the flesh. It kind of, uh, you could argue it both ways. Yeah, but why, why would he make it so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I mean, ask him, I'll ask him when I see him. I'm oh, not okay. sure. <laughs> well, if you've got this, yes, please, and then give me the thing. <laughs> I mean, it, but it, no, you, but you t on a serious note, I mean... Yeah. I, Two things, two thing, important things about that. You know, there, there's even a science of this. There was a, if you read in the book about the Marsh Chapel experiment, there was, a, there was a study done in which people were given psilocybin. These were priests, not, yeah. novice priests, who were given on, on Good Friday, you know, in, when they had six or seven hours in the, in, in, in the chapel thinking about the, you know, the crucifixion. Half were given psilocybin, half were given a, a placebo, active placebo. And I think nine of the ten that got out of had a powerful, powerful religious experience. They they understood what it was like, you know, to, to to be in touch with God, which is of course what when most people talk about religious beliefs and desires, what they really are saying is they want to to have that experience of being um, yeah. with God. Most people are seeking it; they don't make it. The psychedelics can help them. And um, and the, as a sort of follow up to that, there's a little study going on in america now um for priests who've lost faith and yeah. see, seeing whether psychedelics can help them regain their faith interesting i've just got these spectacular rays of sun coming through my window at the moment so you it's, do rather yes it's creating a, a heavenly effect on, on, on yeah yeah I, 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 as long as you're not going to be it's not going to be strong video <laughs> as, lo as long as you can see it as well that's the main thing i can certainly see it <laughs> I'm just really envious. There's not much sun here. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, it's, it's, it's sunny every day in Carlisle, if only. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know something? Yeah. You're about to get a medical school. Your Imperial College is about to... No, we, we are. Uh, the, the Pear School of Medicine. There you go. Yes. Yeah. I've been away for a few years, but this is where I've drift, drifted back. You yeah. might even get me up there lecturing to your medical students. Yeah, they never know. I might be invited to give the odd talk. It's, it's well, not, you, absolutely. You it's, should. Not, it's not impossible, actually. Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got a few friends who are teaching on it. Um, Has it started? Uh, well, I, I don't know. If it, I think I think they were recruiting the first. They've either just recruited the first group or they're just about to. But, but I know I've got some friends who've been appointed to positions. Okay. How excellent. Okay. So yeah. it's going to be a sort of community-based medical school, bro. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. <laughs>